Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Giving all praise to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Bashem Rakakwadash. This is uh, from Isaiah, the 19th chapter, in the first verse. I was just watching some videos to get some form of inspiration to do a video myself. And um, I went to different precepts, and um, the Spirit led me to Isaiah 19 and 1, and I was going to do the whole chapter, which some of it is pretty much self-explanatory. Some of it you have to explain a little, but pretty much the whole chapter is pretty much self-explanatory for the ones of you that have been in this thing for years and you are teachers now, top teachers, you know, you know this. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go right into it. And what caught my eye was actually the first verse because I was, I normally we go to like the 18, 19 verse, the last, I don't know, five, six, seven verses. Anyway, I went to Isaiah 19, verse 1, and it said, The burden of Egypt. Now, as you read this, you're going to come to the understanding that this is talking about Babylon the Great. And uh, the Most High, the Most High used the word, the term Babylon or the place called Babylon, Egypt, Assyria, even the land of Edom. That's in Isaiah the 34th chapter. In um, Isaiah the 34th chapter, <clears throat> excuse me, speaks about the land of Edom, which is America. This is the new Edom, so, so you, if you will. Anyway, let me just go ahead and read it. I'm going to put this up raw. It says, uh, the burden of Egypt, which we know is, is Babylon the Great, also spoken of in um, Isaiah the 13th chapter, Behold, Yahweh rideth upon a swift cloud, and the clouds are synonymous with the so-called UFOs. When you read Acts, the first chapter, it said the Lord was taken up into a cloud, the two men in white, which are angels, two angels, Arrayed in white said, Why stand ye marveling into heaven? The same way the Lord left is the same way he's coming back with so called UFOs. It says, uh, And shall come into Egypt, which is Babylon the Great, and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. The idols represent anything that's, uh, that makes America great. You know, you have uh, D.C., which is the capital of the nation. Then you have uh, you have the uh, the Empire State Building. You have the the One World Trade Center. Bear with me for a minute. Okay, uh, that was just something that popped up that I had to deal with because I got a, I had to get a new computer, my old, old computer. I couldn't start up, so I, I'm I'm gonna have to give it to uh, the uh, bishop, elder bishop, bishop, uh, so he can just see if he can fix it because I got all a lot of pictures and videos, and I have uh, the program that I put up the videos where I, you know, uh, the pentacle, which I deal with. So it's not on this one. I didn't put it up yet, but let's see what happens. Anyway, let me read that again. It said, the burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at, at his presence. And the the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And that, and when you look up that word melt, I clicked on the word melt, 
and it gave me a bunch of precepts dealing with the word melt and it means to literally melt a bunch of precepts should come to mind uh, the heart shall melt in um, Isaiah the 13th chapter um, Second Peter uh, 3 verse uh, 10, 10, 11 and 12 it speaks about that this place is going to melt with fervent heat and I believe the word and I just looked at it for melt in the Hebrew is masa or masas which means to literally melt like um, the one of the precepts that came up was uh, manna when manna when you you received enough manna on the sixth day to cover you for the seventh day because it was a Sabbath. You wasn't supposed to go out and pick up, pick out a uh, manna. So you had Israelites that saved. They, they after the after the um, the Sabbath, they would try to save. You know, more than one day's worth, and that next day it would melt. And I believe it turned into worms, if I'm not mistaken. You can go to, go to that precept. And it said it would melt by the sun. So like I said, I'm not going to read. You know what, let me read the second verse. Isaiah 19, verse 2. And I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptians which is happening right now and they shall fight everyone against his neighbor now what precepts should come to mind second Ezra 15 and second Ezra 16 the 16th chapter third verse and the spirit of Egypt shall shall fail in the midst thereof and that's what's happening now Babylon the Great is failing in the midst thereof you have the middle class being totally destroyed you have these mom and pop uh, retail stores and restaurants <clears throat> and through the decree of the federal government and state governments <laughs> They're saying, oh, you can't um, open, you know, when this thing first came on the scene, they had closed everything down. I remember we did a video and we had went down to uh, lower Manhattan. This had to be somewhere around May june i would say and we went down in the midtown manhattan and it was about seven o'clock <clears throat> no traffic no traffic whatsoever maybe a car or two you know normally when you when you shoot down into midtown manhattan as they call it midtown manhattan times square that area nothing you might see a police cruiser you didn't even see no, and I noticed there's always taxis down there. You didn't see no taxis. Third verse, and the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And the spirit, the spirit of these people, they don't speak about it a lot, but a lot of people been committing suicide. And they lost money, they went down to their bank account. And they're seeing that um, the federal government is really not helping them the way they should. They have a um, mor 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 moratorium, excuse me, that's a tongue twisted to me, moratorium on uh, rents where people do not have to pay rents. Well, how does that help the, uh, bu the building owners or the house owners that have to pay a mortgage? Well, there's a, I believe there's a moratorium on the mortgage payments as well. But still, you have 
people that own buildings and own houses and properties that debt and rent money, they live off of that. There's some people that retire and they just live, they make money off of their house. They might have a five family house that they make money off of. See, not, they're not telling you the full story. That this place, this is this place has quickly went gone from a recession to a major depression, and this depression is worse than the depression of twenty nine. And there's a talk about a um, a reset, a reset, a global reset, and part of that reset is the money system. And that we teach here at GMS that it's going to be based upon the the great chipping. It says Isaiah 19 verse 3, and the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols. Now, when I came across this uh, line right here in this verse, third verse, I thought about recently uh, this guy, um, Tyler Perry, had did a, a video, and he's going to do a special. I don't know if he did it already, about him getting the, the jab and the importance of his people getting the jab. And then they had, oh, they had um, Dave Chappelle he all of a sudden was uh, was uh, diagnosed positive for for the for the thing. So what is that? That's your idols. They're getting the idols. And I said this years ago. I said when they pushed that the the um, the mark of the beast, that they're gonna get a lot of uh, these idols to take it, so that you say, well, oh. This guy took it, so I'm going to take it. Or this famous singer took it, so I'm going to take it. So I went to the vi one of the videos where he was interviewed by uh, Adele King, and I'm and I'm looking at the uh, the comments, and all the comments were negative. All the comments were negative, man. Hey, like, just like when um. General Johanna said, "Go ahead and take it." Everybody turned against him. If you know, you notice he ain't talking about it no more. It goes on to say to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. Let me go to the fourth verse, and I'm gonna jump down. And the Egyptians, which is Babylon the Great, will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord. Now, ultimately, the cruel Lord is, is when our Lord comes back. But being that this individual, uh, Joe Biden, is now the president, he immediately, inside of two weeks, signed off on... 40 executive orders and memorandum. You can put that in, go to Google, give you the news articles and whatnot. There was a meeting that uh, Biden had with uh, Al Sharpton and the so-called black leadership. And in this meeting, and it was leaked, Somebody had snuck in um, a recorder, but they wasn't supposed to heard it. Here, you know, get this information. It was like a closed meeting, and um, in the meeting, he basically told Jake, "You can go to hell." If you look up uh, Joe Biden's secret leak meeting with Al Sharpton or whatever, any of those words. And some of these videos actually have, you can hear the actual uh, conversation. 
so when I read this verse, the fourth verse, I thought of uh, Biden. And I said prior, if you check my videos, I said, if this guy becomes president, he's going to make Trump look like a Girl Scout. So it goes on to say in the fourth verse, and the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a cruel Lord and a fierce king. And this also, what I think about is uh, Daniel, the eighth chapter, where it speaks about Antiochus' epiphanies. Now, could this be Antiochus' epiphanies coming back? Only time will tell. And a fierce king shall rule over them, say of Yahweh, uh, the Lord of hosts. Now, you know that the word Lord and cruel Lord, the word there is lowercase l-o-r-d. So we know it's not talking about Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. But ultimately, the cruel Lord will be our Lord himself. Now I'm going to jump down because this is pretty, the rest of this is pretty much self-explanatory. It says in the ninth verse, more, moreover, that they that work in flax, fine flax, and they that weave nets, networks, shall be confounded. So just based on what we read, we know it's not talking about ancient Egypt because ancient Egypt was already destroyed. It never came back to the power that it had. At, at one point, ancient Egypt was a great power. It says, um, Isaiah 19, verse uh, 15, Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail, branch or rush may do. And what comes to mind, precept that comes to mind is Lamentation 12. 16 verse. In that day, where we're in that, we're coming to that day and things are going to get worse. And ultimately when we are delivered, the hopeful elect are delivered, that's going to be in the midst of Jacob's trouble pursuant to uh, Daniel the 12th chapter. It says, in that day shall Egypt be like unto woman, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of Yahweh of hosts, which he shaketh over it. 17. And the land of Judah, now Yahweh represents a people <coughs> before it's a place. <coughs> So the land of Israel, or the land of Yehudah, represent Judah, which represent ultimately Israel. The scriptures speak about out of the waters of, of Yehudah, shall be a terror unto Egypt, which is a Babylon the Great. Everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself because of the counsel of Yehudah of hosts, which he hath determined against it. The scriptures, Isaiah speaks about the the Lord, the words of the Lord, so I'm paraphrasing, go not out, come not back to him, void. So what did he do? And this is fulfilled before your eyes. Uh, Ezekiel 37 chapter, where you got the dry bones in the valley rising up having sinews put upon them, skin upon their flesh, a covering, and a breath. And what is the breath? The knowledge. And the most important thing that we should be doing right now is what? Is um, prophesying. A 17, 17 verse. And the land of Yahweh shall be a terror uh, unto Egypt, and everyone that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in the midst, because of the counsel of Yahweh of hosts, which he hath determined against it. 
in that day, 